This show has been made possible with the continued support of the Gaming One Affiliates. Yeah, <clears throat> all right. Well, here we go again, my friends. As long as they keep paying me, I'll keep making these. Because, you know, I don't have any other marketable skills. So this is pretty much it for me. Huh. That said, that said, uh, there's always something to talk about with online gambling, such as COVID and the upcoming conferences in April. More on that in a few moments. Up first, <laughs> up first, the latest propaganda from those opposed to our industry in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> with little doubt, about the timing of this article. This is a uh, strategic release leading up to the review of the Gambling Act, no doubt there. This uh, study, which was funded in part by the GamStop Self-Exclusion Service, found that just over one in every three college students in Britain had borrowed money to gamble from friends or even payday loans. Hmm. <laughs> and while a few said they spent 50 pounds a week, most said they just spent around 10 pounds or less per week. Of course, when I was in college, there were no payday loans to speak of and uh, we had to travel everywhere on horseback, but I digress. Still, I borrowed money, or sold textbooks, or gave blood to get cash for alcohol. <clears throat> Not that I'm justifying my behavior or the behavior of these young folk over here. GamStop was quick to use this story that they helped fund to self-promote and demonstrate their value and in turn the value of the UK Gambling Commission who, as most of you know, oversee them. So hey, we get a two-for-one deal on the good PR. But perhaps, and I'm just trying to think out of the box here, Perhaps instead of pushing self-exclusion as a primary option, shouldn't there be some kind of education about responsible gambling for these college kids? I mean, after all, they are taking classes anyway. And to me, what's scarier than college kids betting 10 quid on a football match is letting them get payday loans. Why is no one talking about that? a twist, GamStop and company were not the only headline whores to go with the borrowed money and gambling addiction storyline in recent history. In fact, nearly four years ago, an eerily similar headline was published in the Times, focusing 
on problem gamblers in Ireland. That article was shared and subsequently shredded in the GPWA forums, which is why, in part, I enjoy making these videos so much because you people are amazing. Because you guys don't have to step in the bullshit before you spot it. You noted how that article cited a psychiatrist who had dealt specifically with problem gamblers and may very well have biased his data by primarily dealing with them. And that people who borrow money do so for various less nefarious reasons, things such as vacations they could not otherwise afford, major purchases, or even to buy crypto and stocks. Not that I would do such a thing. <laughs> but, but none of that really matters. If the headline is good, the topic is hot, and politics are involved. And speaking of politics and hot topics, we know that ICE and IGB affiliate are, are now scheduled for April, having been pushed back from February. And as much as I really, really want to go, I have to admit that on a personal level, I've been a bit concerned about all the testing and the possibility of being quarantined for 10 days. You know, if, if I test positive, even if it's a false positive or one of my colleagues were to test positive, they would lock my ass down for 10 days. All the while, my cat would be sitting at home starving to death. Now, however, all that could be thrown aside as the UK government moves to a learn to live with the virus philosophy. How refreshing. This will mean an end to self-isolation and face coverings as soon as next week, which if we want to be honest, that's sort of a bummer for me. I mean, losing the face coverings, because I think we can all agree, I look better with my face covered. But really, this is an amazing development. My only question is, will this apply to tourists or just UK citizens? Because if it's for everyone, I might be able to get on board with that. Well, huh. It's cold, it's windy, as you can probably tell, and I got just a little bit of my smoke left. So I'm going to take leave of you at this point, but I'll be back next week, God willing, and if I haven't caught a freaking cold out here or some new strain of the damn coronavirus. For those of you waiting for a blooper this week, there are none. I think uh, I think smoking the cigar and just slowing down my delivery, I think that saved my ass. Because, I mean, I did screw up a couple of times, but I was able to recover. And really, that's the most important thing. That's why I'm a professional. Hey.